This is uh, Mike Schmidt, and I'm going to present our uh, introduction to Nerve Center 6.0. Before I get into the new features and so forth, um, I want to talk a little bit about our sort of strategic direction for uh, our roadmap going forward. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is we are uh, recording this uh, webinar. Uh, again, welcome. And uh, basically, as you know, we've we've closed out our, our five series uh, releases. The the goal of the five series uh, on our side was was predominantly performance and capacity and metrics for managing capacity and polar performance. And with our 5.2 series, or 5.2 release, I should say, um, you know, we really completed that. We've, we, we're at the point where we've, we've really optimized the, uh, the polling engine about as much as it, it can be done. Uh, um, laws of physics come into place at this point with, you know, disk I.O. and bandwidth usage and so forth. And by adding the detailed metrics for managing the polar environment, um, We've made it very robust. So now we're into the 6 series, and we've just released version 6.0. And the whole goal and, and, and uh, uh, you know, the, the push going forward now with the 6 series is all going to be about features. And we intend to put out 6 releases uh, much more frequently than we sort of have been in the past, something on the order of, you know, maybe uh, 3, potentially even 4 per year. And each release will have, you know, a small number of features, uh, two to three to, to maybe four. Um, in the 6.0 series, I'm going to show you uh, two new features, one being a built-in uh, client-based MIB browser, and the other a feature that we're calling Add Varbind, and I'll show you those and describe them. Coming in 6.1, we've, we've kind of uh, already finalized, and 6.1 is going to include three sort of new features, one of which will be centered around the way we handle V1 versus V2 traps. You're going to have the option of converting a V1 trap to a V2 on a per trap or per mask basis. And the reason for that is that is the way that the traps, the two different versions, handle the source IP. And there's, uh, we, we've had some feedback that it would be desirable to leverage the V2 and take advantage of the, the true source of the trap as opposed to, uh, you know, IP address. Uh, this helps from, for NATing envir NATed environment. The other one will be a sort of a cron-based uh, polling option where instead of saying I can poll every five minutes, I could actually set up a similar to a, a cron type of configuration where I could poll, you know, every hour, five minutes after the hour, or every day at 3 p.m., 2.30 a.m., and, you know, something else. Those are just a couple of the features that are coming. We're always looking for feedback for new features coming forward. We've, we've already talked with, I know, many of you and, and gotten your feedback, so thanks for that. So anything else that anyone comes up with, let, let me know and send us an email, you know, myself, Steve, anybody, and, uh, you know, we'll talk about it and see if it's something we can do in an in a upcoming six series release. Okay, let me get into now the features that are being released in uh, 6.0 or have been released. The mid browser from the node definition, which you all know is just our button right here, the nodes defined for management, um, there is a new tab called MIB Query. Uh, in our last release, you may recall the SNMP and ICMP and trace tabs that showed up as new tabs. Now we have another new one called MIB Query. Basically, what you're able to do here is select an IP address if the node has more than one. Uh, select either a base object or simply type in an OID. When you select a base object, it's actually going through the base objects that exist in the compiled MIB of your server, whichever server you're, you know, connected to. 
uh, if you have a new MIB that you haven't compiled yet and you want to test the node to see if that OID responds or what it looks like, you can just you know cut and paste an OID straight in there. In either case, you're going to do a query and get back, in this case, the IF entry table of this uh, node that I'm looking at, which is a little Linksys router, actually. Um, or I can type a whole OID, which could be quite large. So you have to be careful if you're going to query a, a whole MIB table. But you can, in fact, do that and query everything available on that host if you really want to. And of course, we have the ability to go ahead and save it as a text file if you want to refer to it later. Now, the significant piece here is that um, in many cases, a nerve center server is in your data center and is set up as being authorized to access your nodes via ACLs or firewalls or whatever. This actual query is not you know, coming from the client that, that I have to be on here, Windows client. It's actually doing the query from the server itself. So that, that makes it uh, a lot easier to access the actual managed nodes in your environment. So that is what we've done for MIP browser. All right, I'm going to talk now about add varbind. And I'll show you two different things. First, I created a very, very simple poll that's to, that calculates the delta of the in and out octets. Uh, in the past, as you know, uh, for those of you who have been using Nerve Center, if I define a poll of any sort and, and include MIB objects, uh, in this case, in and out octets, when I fire a trigger, all I have available on that trigger is the actual raw count, the raw MIB variable, uh, you know, the actual counter value that came back for in and out octets. Well, logging that is all fine and good, but the delta is what I really would like to log if I want to do some sort of reporting on it to get a, a bandwidth usage. Uh, the same thing would go if I'm doing any other math or calculation in, in a poll. Also, if I'm doing something that's non-SNMP in a poll, if I'm querying a database or some of the other things we've done, you know, in our model clubs where we leverage Perl modules, um, none of those variables would show up on a on a fire trigger that we could use, like going forward in a uh, a subroutine or or logging to file or something of that nature. So, add varbind is actually a a Perl function that we've added, and, and this is it right here. And all I've done is simply define the variable for the delta, you know, multiplying by eight to get the bits. And uh, I've defined here add varbind in traffic, add varbind out traffic. What that will do is actually add those as the last two varbinds available when I fire my trigger. Now, to show what that looks like, I have here. I'm tailing a log file that my model is logging. And as you can see here, some of these are zero because the, the, the host, um, you know, some of the uh, interfaces are not actually, don't have traffic on them. But as you can see up here in some of these, I have nerve center object. And it does put an OID string on there. You'll have an option to actually define a data type and an OID string if you really need to. Um, for the varbind itself, but if you don't and you just put a piece of text like I did here, um, it'll actually just assign one and, you know, you can use it or not. In our case here, we have the two varbinds, nerve center objects, and as you can see, we have the actual delta, it looks like some more just came in, um, of, you know, 2495.xxx and 124.0. 0.97. So again, this now gives you the ability to pass along a calculated value like a delta or any other uh, type of math that might be performed or logic, and uh, you can forward that, in, you know, use that in a in a subroutine now, log to file, or on a command line uh, to send like a an email to send a an alert 
and actually put values. You know, one thing I, I recall hearing uh, feedback from some customers saying that they like to have high CPU alert, but I'd like to put the percentage in there to say it's, you know, 85, 87.2, 90, and now you're going to be able to do that. So that, that will be available in a, uh, a transition uh, when you're sending an alert to, like, say, Netcool or whatever system you're using for alerting, uh, pass along in an email, et cetera. So that is the uh, add var bind feature. Those are the two features that we're, we've released in the 6.0. And like I said, we're going to continue to do small releases, small numbers of features, but more frequent releases going forward. We had a question here about, for those who have written their questions, if you have a, uh, if, if we don't get to it online during the webinar, we'll, we'll definitely answer you offline in an email. Well, let me just go ahead and answer a couple of these questions that I do see here while we're, while we're on the line here. Uh, is there a move to introduce and extend filtering capability in the alarm summary window? Actually, we have done uh, some of that, not, not necessarily in the alarm summary, but um, for instance, in the, uh, in the node dialog, we have the ability to do a search. And sorting, we, we have discussed that. that. That is something you know, we, we could certainly do, or not sorting, but filtering. Yeah, that, that, does, make, that does make sense. So we'll um, we'll get back to you on what that you know what that might look like. Uh, let's see, I've got another question here that uh, all right. Show the syntax of the adverb and we just pass the name in addition to the value. Um, well, this is this is actually the the name of the var bind. So the value will be whatever the value is per poll. Um, if I want to do add var bind and, and put a uh, um, you know an actual data type or something like that, um, it's basically you do you do an add var bind and you you define the data type and then you have the option of putting an annoyed in there and the data types are things like gauge, integer, you know S and P data types. So I, I hope I answered your question uh, on that. That's that's the way the, the uh, the Advar bind syntax looks. Um, if you're interested in doing a, um, you know, a trial of 6.0, let us know um, to see how it might work for your environment. Again, we're going to continue to come out with these new features, new new releases more frequently, and we'll be doing another model club uh, here probably in the next, I don't know, three or four weeks. So stay tuned. Watch your email for those uh, invites. And um, again, have a good day, and we'll, we'll talk to you next time when we have another webinar. And that's it. Thanks. Bye.